Situated 20 kilometers southeast of Shigatse is the Shalu Monastery. My guide tells me Shalu means new bud. A famous Tibetan abbot wanted to build a monastery to spread the doctrines of Buddhism. So he consulted his teacher about the construction site. And his teacher suggested that the monastery should be built where a shooting arrow fell. The arrow fell in the new bud, hence the name Shalu Monastery. I watch a flurry of activity at the site as our guide rambled on. This monastery was founded in 1027 AD and is constructed in Tibetan and Han Chinese style architecture. The green ceramic roof tiles are what are said to have set it apart, unfortunately not visible due to all the restoration work going on. Huge rocks are being carried about to the mechanized stone crusher in the inner courtyard. On inquiring, I find out that these crushed pebbles are the first layer of the roofing. On top of that, three layers of Arga clay are stomped into the ground by a group of mostly girls using sticks with a circular, heavy, flat stone at the bottom, creating a smooth and waterproof surface. They sing rhythmic melodies to keep the beat and tempo of the pounding action to level and restore the monastery floors. The statues of Shakyamuni and his disciples are worshipped here. To the west of Shigatse, is the Tashilumpo Monastery of the Geluk School founded in 1447, covering 70,000 square meters. It is, as I see, an essentially walled township. Historically, it has been the seat of the Panchen Lama and therefore of great importance. As I enter, being the month of Sagadawa, the delightful sight of local Tibetans in traditional chubas making the holy Kora greets me. I watch the pilgrims collecting merit by doing the repetitions clockwise, believing that if they in eventual continuous lifetimes collect high numbers, they might leave the endless cycle of rebirth and attain nirvana. Walking around the maze-like monastery, suddenly I encounter countless young monks, all scurrying about as if on a mission. 
I follow them and arrive at the chanting hall. It is a special day. The scene takes on a Shakespearean atmosphere. The sound of mesmerizing Tibetan chants fill the hall, interrupted only by servings of yak butter tea, sampa, and by pilgrims who hand over their donations to each and every monk in the hall.